Hello everyone and welcome back to Backseat VR Developer here on UploadVR.com. It is the show where we are playing all of our favorite virtual reality titles right alongside the developers that have created them. Thank you for joining us. Hello everyone, my name is Alex VR. I am one half of Between Realities. The other half of Between Realities is right here. It's Skiva. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going today, Alex? Ah, doing pretty good, man. We are about awesome. to play some Into the Radius. And joining us today from the team that has created Into the Radius is the producer of the game, Alexi. What's up, Alexi? Thanks for being here, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. I uh, I hope you are ready to dive into some of this. Have you ever watched anybody, you know, play the game like this over their shoulder and, and kind of been there in the back seat? Yeah, sure. But like haven't done this in a while because in the early days, I, we used to do a lot of play testing here and there. And so, yeah, we basically had to do that. Nice. Now it's more like... Nice. Well, most of the time we we like we are watching the streamers play after they play, right. <laughs> not during. Yes, you're watching during this time, so you're gonna make sure I don't do anything stupid, right, Alexi? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you're like I'm just man. I just I'm not a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being here, dude. So in in this room, this is kind of like the uh, you know I knocked out the tutorial before we got in here, right? This is kind of like your like your home base area. You know, you like start your missions and stuff like that from here. Yep. So it's uh, actually in the hub. It's a safe location where you have your mission computer, where you have your missions, and uh, this big map on the wall. It shows uh, the mission points and the way that actually, how you get there. And yeah, there is a shop in this map that can be used to buy and sell equipment. And that's about it. One of the things Here. that I, I feel like this game, which, by the way, congratulations on the reception that this game has gotten, especially since coming to the Quest. I feel like a lot of people really love Into the Radius, and I'm sure you guys must be excited about that, right? Yeah, like, it wasn't an overnight success We because we left early access, like, two years ago mm -hmm. or something, and the, we had, like, mixed reviews by that time or, like, mostly positive so we did a lot of hearing of feedback of players and do, done a lot of actually uh, groundwork improvements on the game. We we re almost redone the game from scratch, from like the 2.0 oh. update of the game. Wow, well good for you because it's so important to listen to community feedback because ultimately they're the ones buying the game, right? So to uh, it, it really, I feel like it's a good thing for developers to do and i'm glad to hear that you did it and it went well and people are really enjoying the game yeah we actually like followed this open like uh not completely open development we don't do all those like dev blogs and like with the entertainment like i don't know larian or non baldur's gate 3 or something else because we don't have the budget mm -hmm. uh, to do that kind of fun but uh, we're mostly trying to release the betas to actually listen to, to talk to players we hang out around discord and just talk to people and see how they react to what needs to be changed of course like we most of the like lo lots of the time we don't uh, we can't like take feedback one to one because some like, uh, for example, often players, they have some gripes with the game, but uh, actually what's bothering them is not the thing that they suggest. And it's our job to actually figure out what's bothering them and how we can solve it in our like constraints that we have. Mm -hmm. So it's actually kind of this uh, detective job. <laughs> A bit. So we're about to dive into some of some of the gameplay here. This is the first mission, and I feel like it's probably a good practice to pull your map out, right? Like I pulled the map out, and I can see this M1. Is this the location that I'm trying to go? Yep, it's uh, M1 stands for mission one because you can have up to five simultaneous missions active, so they will just be numbers on your map, and we have a lot of. Uh, 
customizable difficulty uh, nowadays. For example, in the olden days, uh, there was no mark uh, that showed where you are on the map currently, and uh, this green arrow that is actually shown here, where you are, and you needed to just All right, use first the map enemy and... in the game. Are you shooting yeah. this thing, or are you, like, conserving ammo and stabbing? <laughs> well, I am um, throwing the knife, Ooh. but it takes a bit practice. Okay, now I need to get it back. You can, you can actually, like, yeah, force grab it out of him because he's slow. Nice. Look at that. Expert developer skills already. That's what I'm looking for here on Backseat VR Developer. I'm going to be throwing the knife from now on. Does it matter if where I hit him? Like, will shoot hitting him in the head? Oh, come on. Be smarter. His, his crit spot is actually in the chest where this... Uh, steer resides so basically if you shoot him you get like four times more damage if you shoot in the crit spot is my and knife getting worse good. already yeah they actually get like crusty very fast and you can put the knife on your hand holster you actually have a you like, see these markings yeah yeah i see that you can just uh, bend your wrist or like yeah, oh. take that. Yes, dude. Oh man, I'm so glad. You we can actually that. like you 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 can actually use the same hand. Like try try the right hand. Just bend your wrist over, like the same. Well, yeah, it depends. Like for so, some people can do that. Wow. Some people can. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a life hack, but yeah. Yeah, that is a life hack <laughs> into the radius hack. Yeah. Mm. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. Now now we're now we're like, cooking with gas. If you like, you can enable the full body display so you're not like floating hands only. Mm -mm. Or like it. Cool. So you have full body out. kinematics or floating hands. Yeah. Alright, where is that? In the yep. settings? Options. Settings. Heck yeah. Uh, show body on. Show body, yeah. Hey, here are my arms. Wow. All right. They're not the best in the industry, but yeah, some <laughs> like we we like disable it for quest for performance reasons, but like yeah, we get that a lot uh, in the like what people would love to change in quest version is like, hey, can you give us a full body? And uh, no, you can't burn it with a lighter. Yeah, we forgot that. <laughs> you forgot that. Write it down. Like it, it, it you you can but it will take it forever like because lighter <laughs> does very small damage oh, i see it, so it's like it's damage just... amount of damage that you have to do yeah. so we're we're playing this right now in the valve index and alex is wearing the b haptics tax suit and he's also wearing the arms and the face piece to get full body haptics uh what other um headsets is this available on so basically you can play on any headset that is on the market and supported in Steam VR or Oculus. The only like the most problematic is the HP Reverb, uh, the G2 one, because we actually don't have that, and it's very and we need controllers, so the control scheme is a bit like <laughs> not very whoops, <laughs> not very nice on that. But besides that, everything should work just so fine. Is it on? Uh, so it's on the Oculus Quest as well. Yeah. And uh, how about uh, PlayStation VR? No. Any no plans for PSVR two? Uh, well, can't say about that currently. Cool. <laughs> That's a good enough answer for us. All right. So here's a freshie, right? Like I don't need this old crusty knife anymore. I mean, I guess I do. Like, should I collect knives, or when I have a nice one, is that okay? Well, depends on, like, you can take it. You have plenty of weight to, like, use, so... Mm, I see. It's yeah. weight-based. How, how much weight can I put in this bag? Well, it just... Uh, you move slower the more weight you have, and... I think you can't move past if you have like 50 kilos or 60. Wow, so you can just keep 
uh, adding things into your bag until it's too heavy and you get too slow yeah. to, to be able to like get away from enemies and stuff like that. Hey, check out this haptic. Come on. Whoa, it looks like it, you can feel it almost where your lungs would be on the vest. It's the inhale, you know? You can feel that sweet, sweet nicotine. Like it getting, get, getting smaller. That's funny. <laughs> it is. I'm gonna put wow. the, bur like, the burning cigarette in my backpack. <laughs> you, you can uh, you can actually take and tap it uh, on the I don't know on the wall and it. Oh, the ash like, just fell off. Man, like that's so good. Immersion. It, it it should like stop. Oh, yeah. put it out. Yeah, <laughs> save this for later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another so neat cool. trick if you take the sig in your hand, like pr press and hold the trigger and then release. Bye. <laughs> so you can have that beautiful flicking moment when you finish yeah. it. Oh man. Yeah, like flick the butt, take off. That's, that's beautiful. And I appreciate being able to smoke in VR because I know it's super cool to smoke cigarettes, but you know, it's just not, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it in real life. So I really get to feel cool when I do it here in Into the Radius. It's actually a very interesting feature because it was basically an afterthought. So like, yeah, like let's try and do the cigarettes and like. This is another fun uh, haptic response right here. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, <clears throat> uh, we weren't thinking much about it. Like, oh, let's add the cigarettes. And once we add them, like players like go super crazy, do a lots of like videos. And there was actually a bug that you can put like tens of cigarettes inside your mouth and they were like chain smoking like <laughs> hundreds of cigarettes and it was so like funny and well received so yeah all right so it's i'm, like I'm basically right on top of my quest marker now so uh yeah it was in the actually uh, it's right down below uh, you in, the, in that yeah and it's in that orange box oh i want and this thing to take that yeah wrist watch other wrist no you just need to take it in your oh, backpack and bring it, it. so just a quest item give me these tasty treats fmj yeah a couple more cigarettes for my victory smoke yeah another thing from like a, a tip uh, so basically uh, when you open your backpack you don't actually need to put everything so it's like 100% in the backpack volume once it touches the backpack like so it can stick out so most of the time what like players do is that they uh, organize different things so they can grab them easily mm. so they have like mags wow. sticking out to one place and the other like sticking in the other place and you actually can put those mags in the vest so you will have like your chest rig yeah yeah that's good man but what about my immersion that's going all the way well, in I'm, I'm a mercy it, 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 it's it's just yeah because it that's the beauty of the system is that you if you want you can put uh like uh, how that's you want nice. actually so like, i've done this level a couple of times and going straight through this is is a not a good smart right <laughs> that's not a plan it's not what we want to do yeah so basically you completed the mission so you can just head back and get your reward oh really wow i've always pushed forward from here and, and basically so till i died <laughs> so when yeah, you finish a mission okay. you go home i'm like okay i'm out of here bye <laughs> yeah so basically yeah you get more by just completing the mission wow this is great once you, once you have like multiple missions available then you can think of like how optimally to uh, select the route how to do them and mm. to like, yeah spend less you just follow the footsteps you need to uh, you need to go a bit back because you don't complete mission in the here oh. you need to bring uh, to follow yeah. the footsteps yeah here we go 
Oh, I remember this place. So can you tell us uh, what the what the specifications would be for to, to run this game on a PC properly? Uh, well, depends on <laughs> on your headset. Uh, so basically, if you have something like Index, uh, you would need something around the 2060 GeForce to play comfortably. Okay, so like it's, if it's you not set a super high. Everything at, you, if you set everything to low, it should technically run on 1070 or even 970, uh, like the original VR minimum requirements. Wow. Nice, but uh, like it, it won't look nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's game on a 1070 this and is the didn't even think about it. Training facility to confirm your access. Cool, so you can, you can play this very test. well, uh, even with Upon lower end, uh, lower spec PCs. So that's that's good to know. better equipment. Like, the resolution like will be bad and like it's not very comfortable to play. So, I, I'd suggest if you have something like Quest 2. Because Quest 2 actually, like, it seems like an entry-level device, but if you attach it to PC, it has a hefty resolution compared to the older devices. So, yeah, sometimes it will require a better graphics card. What's, what's your favorite headset to play your game on? I have the Index and Oculus Quest at home, so uh, basically I use uh, Index for development. Yeah, mostly I use Index. Nice. That's um, it's, definitely it's just my preferred. Like this. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I'll kind of the Quest is a nice device, uh, but I hate this uh, art compression artifacts when you stream because like you can't connect it. Uh, like you do the other headsets, the PC ones. Uh, if you do the Air Link or the, like the Wired Link of Quest, you basically it's, uh, you have you can see those compression artifacts. Yeah, don't like that. Yeah, I agree. It is nice for people that don't have um, any other choice, and you know, or they they just want to have one VR headset. So that's. That's good. But yeah, I agree. Uh, uncompressed data looks way better uh, to a headset. So. Yeah, it, it's actually like strongly dependent on the content. If you play something like Beat Saber, you would notice, I think. Like we have lots of like uh, high frequency detail, like leads and those kind of things. And yeah, just doesn't do that. But for some people, having no wire is just yeah much better. They it's great that we have a choice now, basically, yeah. It is. That That's it's fantastic. Yeah. Do I need to hit these targets? Press B nope. to open item info. Oh, long press B. Nice. Uh, there's the durability and damage of this weapon. It's in bad shape. Hey, if you want to disable the beep, you just open the map. Uh, it's... Where did my mag go? I think you ejected it. Yes. Like the... <laughs> okay. That's full. What uh, what inspired you guys for this game? Was there were there any titles um, that that you guys played that really served as an inspiration for this title? Well, Stalker series games, of course, because like the the PC, the original PC ones, and the book Roadside Picnic that is actually is the base of the Stalker series. It's about this anomaly zone and uh, all those concepts of artifacts and like the book is uh, not about shooting or like some. Uh, it's more about this existential dread and 
So yeah, but it, it's actually an interesting setting that uh, allows a lot of things uh, to happen inside the game. And we thought that it would be cool to have uh, this in VR because I personally uh, was very interested in having some sort of like realistic gameplay, like realistic interactions with gods. How do I stop the beep? Oh, I did. Yeah, you stopped. Yeah, it's actually this clock clocky thing on your map. If you press it, then it will stop the beeping. Insert this into the barrel and slide it back and forth. Oh, come on, baby. That's wild. I don't think I've ever seen like detail like being able to clean your guns like this in any other game. I know, now it's all shiny and nice. Yeah, that's actually a unique feature for our game. Like... Despite our best efforts, the only ones able to enter the radius. If someone course, buys like this, you... uh, what would they expect to get uh, from playtime from this game? Is it, is it a pretty long one? Well, depends on how you play it, but uh, most people play around 20 hours. Like, if you want to play more, like some people, I don't know, we have uh, people in hundreds, but that's uh, usually an exception. So I'd, I'd suggest about like 16 to 20 hours. Can I make some sound with this? Yep. You're just open the dressing mode, I think, to disable the dressing mode. Yep, and you need to press the B key on the on hand the that holds. Yep. The hand that holds the guitar. Pick to play. And yeah, there is a quarter. Pick. What? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's another. And if you. If you hold the trigger on the uh, hand that holds the guitar, you can switch the chords. What? This is so cool! And wow. you can play with anything, actually. Not not to pick. You can use, uh, I don't know, a gun or <laughs> anything. Like a mag or like a, it will still work. <laughs> At first we like decided that Oh, it's a bug, and then, oh, let, let, let it be. It's just fun for players to find out. That's hilarious. That's good stuff. Don't mind me, I'm just going to play guitar for the rest of this. Okay. Cool, let's uh, see if we can get a little bit more... Ooh, what is this? Artifact that heals you. Hmm. Once you activate it. Oh, keep that. Yeah, you need to... Okay. Also, are these my lucky marbles? No, this is the thing I can throw into the anomalies. Yep. Okay, cool. Missions. Total Recall. I love Total Recall. <laughs> what are your future plans for this game? Are you going to continue to add content to it? Or are you st you're still working on it? Or Well, we are still working at it and adding content <laughs> so what we usually do like with what we have been doing with the game like for past three years or so is that we release an update uh, like once a quarter once three two or three months or something along the depends on the scope of the update and we add new guns, new features or we just change everything up like we do did with a point to o update. So yeah, just the next update is going out in start of the October. Jeez. We are adding the teleport locomotion. Because, like, yeah, lots of players. There's no teleport, actually, huh? No, we no. just have only smooth locomotion currently. But, yeah, we uh, got lots of requests for that, and. Ah! Players. 
Oh, so 20 plus hours of content and you're still adding more. That's amazing. Nicely done. Yeah, like you can't have too much of a good game. Man. Right, I agree with you there. <laughs> this thing is so crazy. These jumping spider-like anomalies. Are those, no, what, do they call those anomalies? Oh, and then this one has a gun. Like what? Why do you, who gave you a gun? You know that you can actually save your game? I can save the game, like, before I die? <laughs> like, you can save your game anytime. Save game. Done. That's probably good advice. Okay, so I'm going to this building over here. So I see a planet off in the distance there. Where where are we right now? Are we are we on Earth? Yep. It's this anomalous zone that is called the Pichorsk radius anomaly or Pichorsk exclusion zone. So it's basically uh, once like in so basically an anomalous event happened and the part of the country just became unaccessible and only some people can go there and uh, no you can't shoot that <laughs> uh, so when you're one of those people who get to explore uh, here and you are actually immortal you like if you die you just get reward so yeah, you're still on Earth, but it's a very strange place on Earth with its strange laws, strange like, physics, and yeah, you get to know it a bit more during your like endeavors. Yeah, it's it's really really cool. The detail in this game is great. Um, it's very strange things happening uh very mysterious um unlike any other game that i have previously seen okay the heart's pounding i need the heal this is it? yep oh, yeah. this is coming with me looks important Got about about two minutes or so left, but um, how how much do you play your own game? I would imagine being a developer, you're probably in here all the time. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's kind of an interesting question because I've been developing this game for like five years now or more, so I can't actually play it because like. When you know everything, how it's everything works, I need. I'm actually testing it more, or if I need to make sure that everything feels nice, I need to try and. Okay, I'm imagining myself a first-time player. I put this hat <laughs> on myself and try to imagine how a player would feel in that situation. Yeah. But it's actually more a make-believe for us. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's. Right, yellow... But basically, we, we we spend we spend a lot of time in the game. Maybe we just don't play it as players do. We just right. jump to some I don't know some parts of the game and try and see if this works or that works. And once in a while, I don't know once half a year I do some sort of like playthrough from scratch to see if everything is still works uh, like oh. uh, feels nice nice that's awesome I have I have like uh, 400 hours of into the radius on my steam account nice <laughs> And and that's it, and that's not like all of it because mostly I play for, from the editor and it it doesn't mm. count. Yeah, and probably on Oculus too, which doesn't record in on Steam. So yeah, 
So if you buy this on the Quest, is it also uh, cross-buy? Are you able to get the Rift version as well? Yep. And if you buy the Rift version, you get the Quest version. Awesome. Very cool. All right, I gotta make it back to the to my home base, and then we can call it. Um, I gotta say, Alexi, having you in the back seat for this has really helped me grasp what's going on here. You know, like a little bit of uh, explanation and a little bit of direction here has really gone a long way for me. And uh, it's really cool to have you come on and kind of like give us that insider look. I already, I'm stoked about those couple of tips that I just got, you know, throwing the knife and keeping it on your arm like this and stuff. That's all really good. Yeah, it's a pity that I can do that to every player <laughs> who doesn't understand or gets upset or something. But yeah, so basically it's like quite a hard game, like not no like hard in like Dark Souls, like when you need to do like, the time like perfectly. Scale. Yeah, yeah. You, you just need to be aware of your surroundings and think a little bit uh, plan ahead and yeah, use your surroundings at this kind of hard game it's and some of the decisions like how things play out are a more on the unique side of the game so players sometimes feel that oh, and i keep running out of stamina that's what this bar is every time i try to sprint yep. this bar yep. gets reduced yeah this looks great these nice lights in here You can turn on the lights on your watch by tapping it with your finger. Nice. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can imagine that it's probably a pretty fine line to walk between like holding the player's hand and like coddling them versus like giving them not enough information to be able to get through stuff. You know, it's it's definitely must be a balancing act for you guys. Yep, and that's one of the things like. Uh, because we have lots of those complex mechanics like for example the gun jamming gun clean even the gun safety like you don't have a safety on your guns in any shooter so most people even don't know that there is a safety on the right. gun and we have to like uh, introduce that to them in the tutorial that's why like we redone the tutorial from scratch i think like six or seven times but completely redone it so wow. well that's important right onboarding someone properly into the game yeah. so they understand is such an important thing yeah so that's basically like the more complex your game is the more you want from the players to actually understand the like the more requirements there are to your tutorial and that's actually for the devs sometimes they they do the game and like the game is great but like oh like we're running out of money or out of time like let's just flip a tutorial on top of it and like no you can't do that like, i see and then no, when you complete no way you complete missions it heightens your security level which then unlocks purchasable items from this store which looks like there's tons of stuff you can buy yep Weapons, ammo, gear, science equipment? Like, where's my microscope? Give me that. <laughs> like, there's not much here. Like, camera, it's used for the photograph, photography missions. Like, if you get once. Uh... Selfie. <laughs> cool. Well, Alexi, producer from Into the Radius, really appreciate your expert opinions and perspective here and uh, we really appreciate you making such a robust and and uh and uh i don't know awesome game for everybody to be able to jump into and especially now on the quest so great job and, and thanks again for joining us yeah thanks guys absolutely uh, well, I think this is time, and which is almost a shame. I feel like I could keep pushing here, but it is what it is, and we're going to thank you all for joining us for this episode of Backseat VR Developer here on UploadVR.com. Between Realities, that's me. I'm Alex VR. And I'm Skiva. And we're Between Realities. That's us. And uh, we are going to thank you again for joining us. Have a lovely day, and we'll see you for the next episode of the show. Bye-bye. Yeah.